going to call the April Craft City Council meeting to order. Clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Leonig. Present. Councilman Hopkins. Present. Councilman Stikos. Here. Councilman Foley. Present. Councilman Cattle. Councilman Colford. Here. Councilman Boscus. Present. Councilman Vice President Vicchio. Present. Councilman Freeman. Present. Everyone, please rise and join me in the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public acknowledgments and commendations, because we have none this evening. Uh, we're moving to public hearings. If there's anyone here to speak about the dog park, uh, we're going to be continuing that another month with all the hearings we've had between the budget and the couple of farms ordinance meetings. We did not have an opportunity to schedule the, uh, the community meeting, which we will have in May. Uh, so those, uh, please look on Facebook, and the council will be sure to uh, get that date socialized with the neighbors. With that, I'll open the floor to public hearings. This is limited to docketed matters. So anything on the docket tonight, feel free to set the podium and give us your comments. Good evening. Name and address the room. Good evening. My name is Annette Bourne, 51 Community Drive, Cranston, Ocean Five. So I know the docketed item that I'm addressing will be withdrawn from the um, from the hearing tonight, but I just wanted to thank all of those uh, city council members who were fighting with us and looking for better solutions for that corner. And for those of you who differed with that, with that opinion, I want to assure you that we want to work together, not only with all of you, but with Mr. Weinstein and with other members of our community to ensure that we have the best possible solution, not only for that corner, but for our neighborhood at large. So I want to thank you and um, be well. Thank you. Anyone speak on docket and matters? Seeing none, the portion of the meeting is now closed. Resolutions, uh, there are no resolutions this evening. Report of committees. Finance Committee, Council Vice President for Thank you, Council President. Uh, we have, first, we have a resolution authorizing real estate tax abatements. This passed in the committee, and I urge the passage here. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve the real estate tax abatements. Second. second. I have a second. Under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Yes. 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 Next, we have a resolution authorizing motor vehicle tax abatements. There's not too many there. We want to take a look at them. They're passing the committee. That's your passage here. Motion approved. Motion approved. Approve. And second under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Possible Yes. Possible Yes. Possible Yes. Possible Yes. Possible Yes. 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 And lastly, we have tax interest waiver approvals uh, that passed also in the committee and asked that it be passed here. We have motion approved. Motion approved. Second. Motion to second for discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Possible Yes. Possible Hopkins. Yes. Councilman Stikos? Yes. Councilman Pauly? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Pavlovskis? Yes. Councilman Vecchio? Yes. Councilman Yes. Moving on, Ordinance Committee, Councilman Pavlovskis, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. We have listed uh, here on the docket, which is withdrawn by the sponsors. We have 10 1703, Ordinance of the Comprehensive Plan, so there's no action taken on that. Moving on, we have 10 1704. Uh, which was a zoning uh, amendment at Park and Walk Avenue that's also been withdrawn. Next on the agenda, we have 1-1802, Ordinance and Amendment of Chapter 17, Code of City of Cranston, 2005, entitled Zoning, Change of Zone, 350 Park Avenue, petition filed by Park East Realty Incorporated, and that was also amended in committee. Uh, the amendment that was made in committee was all, all the uses permitted are those permitted by right in the C2 zoning district, and the following uses permitted in a C3 zoning district, which was commercial daycare and urgent care facility, and that passed unanimously. 
Motion to approve. And a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Manning? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Stikos? Yes. Councilman McCauley? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Kapowaskis? Yes. Councilman Rekha Riccio? Yes. Councilman President Kuhn? Yes. Okay. Moving on, we have 2 1801 ordinance authorizing the city to construct the dog park on Stony Anchor Drive. Uh, sponsored by Councilman Farina and Pat Blaskis, and I'd like uh, to request a motion to continue this to next month's meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion to continue a second. Under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the vote. Councilman Lanning? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Stikos? Yes. Councilman McCauley? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Pat Blaskis? Yes. Councilman Rita Riccio? Yes. Councilman President Farina? Yes. Moving on to Safety Services Committee, Council of the the floor is yours. We have uh, one item uh, forwarded to us from the Safety Services Committee, 3-1801, Ordinance and Amendment of Section 5.04.070, the Code of City of Cranston, 2005, the title Licensing Generally, Safety Services Committee, sponsored by Council of Marquette. This passing committee. Motion to approve. Second. And motion and second under discussion. Council Vice President. Thank you, Council President. Just wanted an explanation as to uh, I don't recall what it was. Chairman Kobach, do you remember? I, I believe this was to give the Safety Services and Licensing Committee um, a little more teeth. Sometimes we send out show clauses for businesses that aren't in compliance, and they don't show up to the show clauses. So show clauses, so it gave us the ability to, I believe, find them. I wish the sponsor was here because I know he put a lot of work into this and he explained it a lot better than I can. Yeah, and now I remember. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Lanning? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Stikos? Yes. Councilman Pauly? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Kapowaskis? Yes. Councilman Rickman Yes. Councilman Freeman? Yes. yes. Claims Committee, Councilman Colford. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Uh, you'll see on our agenda tonight the report of settled claims. Uh, there are quite a few here this evening, and uh, hopefully the winter has slowed down, and so will our claims. Um, but the, that's it for the tonight, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Public hearing. Uh, this is open to any matter anyone would like to speak on. Name matters for the record. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. President. Uh, Douglas Joe, 178 Lippert Avenue. The notes on the agenda, the National Grid has finally released the four locations for the Hope Road project and Lippert Out project. It's taken almost three years for Hope Road, almost two years for Lippert Out. Um, I've been trying to get information from uh, everybody for months. I had a chance to talk to the National Grid in the jail this morning. I would assume most of you, at least I did anyway, assumed that the Hope Road project would connect through the National Grid easement right next to it, the Sierra Street by. Well, they can't do that because of the extensive wetlands and technical reasons as far as distance between circuits, et cetera. So they're going to go all the way down Hope Road and all the way up late at night. It's going to be about three miles. It's going to impact conservation land, plus uh, the cities, Night Farm, Audubon, uh, Kern State Park. And I imagine no one in 2015 expected that to happen when you approved that amendment. And the impacts have been severe, particularly in my neighborhood. Um, and I hope this council at some point take a look at it, amendment, that zoning ordinance, and make the really necessary changes we need to protect the conservation land, protect residences, from the impact of these massive utility scale projects. Um, I know some of you have asked for site visits, I'll be getting in touch with you this week, now the weather's cleared up. We know the pole location so that you can actually see how many trees we're going to lose out there and the impact it's going to have on our conservation land. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak on any matter? Good evening. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, Laurie Dorsey, 7 Pilgrim Drive in Cranston. I just, I, I guess I've got more questions than comments. Um, we noticed that page three of the city charter states that there's supposed to be a city council member voting on the planning commission. And in the last meeting, it, uh, there wasn't one. Um, 
So that was one thing. Also, we saw that there's supposed to be five full-time employees in the planning department per the city charter, uh, which really isn't that old. And it looked like um, there were seven private people. Let me just take a look at this. The voting members of the planning commission, um, one of the reasons that the le one of the last meetings was pushed up, pushed back another month was because there weren't enough people, but there were. So we're just trying to figure out what's going on with this. Because it looks like you're in violation of the city charter. And if that's the case, then do votes count? Yeah, I would actually ask you to direct those questions to the administration. Uh, they handle the people who work in the planning department. That is not the job of the council. The administration would oversee that. Uh, as far as the member being on the planning commission, I believe that law was changed by Council President Aaron Garabedian uh, several years ago. Paul McFarland was on the planning board, uh, but that person actually came off the board, if my memory serves correct. Now I'd ask Jason Pizzullo if he has any reflection on that, because that's more of a council function. We can talk to that. Um, that that was the charter, uh, the seven members. One of those members was an actual city member of the city council, and it was amended um, by the voters eight years ago, I think, maybe more. Um, since then, the additional amendment to the city charter added two city council picks on the on the city council on the planning commission, one for Eastern Cranston, one for West Cranston, Western Cranston. Bringing the number to nine, so per the charter, uh, you need five members. Um, the, the quorum of the overall board is five members, so that's the vote. So I don't know if that clarifies anything. That's correct, but out of date, the information should have. So that's the information that's on the City Hall website. That's where we got that. Um, so that needs to be updated, obviously. We'll direct the comment to the administration and have okay. them work with their IT department to change the website. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else to speak on any topic? Name that director, please. I'm Marcia Fowler, 35 months and a half. Is this the place to talk about street signs? This is your time to okay. whatever you like, All so right. talk um, about street signs, let's hear it. I feel like when you're leaving Parkview and heading out onto Park Ave, the, there's a no right on red sign that's posted back further on a telephone pole, but as you're waiting at that light, you can't see that, and people are turning right, I am turning right. So I think that sign needs to be up at the stop signs, or at the stop lights. So people waiting can see that you don't turn around. Right sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Seeing none, that portion of the meeting is not closed. Moving on, election of city officials. Uh, we have the budget analyst position of David DeMeo on tonight for appointment. My resume was sent to you gentlemen uh, twice, once a few weeks ago, I think once today as a follow up. And motion to appoint. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Lanny? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Stikos? Yes. Councilman Quali? Yes. Councilman Arcado? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Kapalaskis? Yes. Councilman Vice President Fabricio? Yes. Councilman President Fabricio? Yes. Uh, the next is a member of the Juvenile Hearing Board. She was appointed to stay in her role as an alternate member last month. Uh, clerk informed me that there was an opening on the juvenile hearing board. We do have, we did have three alternates. Uh, one of them did, one, another person did express interest in being appointed if that position opened up as a full term member. Um, so I'm going to ask the board give it a month so I can reach out to that alternate to be fair to both women because they were both alternates and during the last section if there is an open position and ask them both uh, if they would like to join. So we'll be handling that next month. Motion continue. That motion continues. Have a second? Second. The discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Lanny? No. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Stikos? Yes. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Arcado? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Kapalaskis? Yes. Councilman Vice oh, Council oh, President Fabricio? 
Yes. Yes. Moving on, report of city officers. I don't believe we have anything tonight. Executive communications, uh, report on hiring special counsel consultants for the charter. I believe that was handed out to all members of the council tonight. So if anyone has questions, give you guys a minute to reference it. Is in the packet? The legal report is in the packet. No, it's not. All right, so we don't have the packet. I'm going to ask that the administration uh, email that to the council so we can get a copy of it. Uh, any questions, forward them directly to the administration. It is a monthly report, so we're only missing one month of actual, but we're supposed to have it at the council meeting, so. Director Strong, I'm making a hand motion, so if you can provide some. Uh... I think uh, because of the change in personnel and Nino Marino retiring, I think it might have slipped through the cracks this month, but I'll follow up on it. Thank you, Director Strong. If you yeah. could, so we have a, both reports next month. If you could, try to see if you can get an email in the next couple of days so we can just make sure we're doing panel analysis in a timely fashion. Make a motion to continue. It's on every month, Council and Land, so I mean, it'll be the next month. But if you'd like, we can add both reports the next month. Council will be the agenda, so we're reminded that we didn't get it this month. So if you do that for me, that'd be great. Moving on, we have advice and consent, the appointment of Steve Pill as a member of the Conservation Commission. Motion approved. Have motion approved. Have a second. Second. Motion and second. No discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Lanny? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Stikos? Yes. Councilman McCauley? Yes. Councilman Marquette? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Vice President Pavicchio? Yes. Councilman President Farina? Yes. Um, Assistant Chief Bernard Patnode has requested continuation of service for one year. Uh, Solicitor Angel has Assistant Chief Patnode met all qualifications to be continued in service for one year? Yes, he has. Motion to approve. Have motion to approve. So have second. A second. Have a second. Have a discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Lanny? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Stikos? Yes. Councilman McCauley? Yes. Councilman Arquetto? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Papaloskis? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Green? Yes. Keep the council president comments very short this month. Uh, we've had a lot of meetings in the last four weeks between budgeting and ordinance. It'll be nice when the budget session is finally done so we can go back to our normal meeting schedule. I'd like to thank all the councilmen and the members of the public for their due diligence in all these matters. I think I counted we were here 26 times in the last two months. So a lot of meetings, a lot of stuff, a lot of work we do. So thank you, gentlemen, for coming here and being due diligent and making all the meetings we can and really doing the people's work. Moving on, Councilman Lanny, you are our first in council member communications. Um, I had asked uh, about the flooding at Gardner and Marlboro, that intersection. This has been going on for years, and I'm just wondering what if anything the city has done about that particular situation. Solicitor Angel, do you have an update for Council Manning? I do not on that. So I think we should ask this to be continued the next month because the only member of the administration here is the solicitor. Well, this may continue from last month, so it's going to be three months before we get an answer on this. Am I correct? It, it feels that way, Councilman. Uh, nothing like transparency. Thank you. Moving on, Councilman Tepaskis. Uh, I think I'm going to have the same answer, but I'll ask anyways. Uh, looking for an administrative update on the Cranston Discovery Network walking trail. I know Councilman Stankos had asked for an update on this too a couple months ago. It's the, uh, the signs that be in Knightsville. Uh, sorry, I'm the issue of the area. Do we have an update on when the next uh, signs are going to go up? Or? Yes. Um, the signs have been made. Uh, obviously, they're not installed yet. Uh, they're working on formalizing uh, the installation of the signs. 
uh, obtaining signed agreements from property owners when the signs will be installed, uh, and obtaining approval from Public Works as to the exact location of the signs and the safety of the installation of the signs at these locations. Um, the administration is working with Mr. Mulcahy uh, to review these locations, um, and they've talked with Solicitor Rawson about drafting of the appropriate agreements. Um, the Rhode Island Foundation was also updated with respect to the delay uh, in filing the appropriate report. The Foundation has accepted the explanation for the delay in the installation of all signs and will accept the final report when the project is finished. The uh, sites for the second round of signs has been decided. Uh, the Cranston Historic Commission is working on the text and pictures for the second round of signs. Uh, the administration has met with Mr. Garcia from the library and Sandra Moyer from the Cranston Historic Commission to discuss the project. Uh, they have also updated, the administration has also updated the Rhode Island Foundation with respect to the delay in filing the appropriate report. Uh, and again, that uh, explanation has been accepted. That is the report that I have for you. Okay, thank you very much. We have a council member from the case this evening. Councilman Stikos. Yes, I have a question. I don't know if uh, there's a solicitor who can answer it, but I believe under uh, under state law, if you request a zone change and you don't get the zone change, you have to wait two years to request the same zone change. Um, and I'm wondering if the withdrawal of the Cumberland Farms proposal, does that uh, trigger a new two-year period, or because it with, was withdrawn, does it not count as a, uh, as a denial? It, it, in my opinion, and again, I would want to provide the council with a formal opinion on this, it's, it's dependent upon whether there is an actual vote in the negative that would trigger the state law. Mr. President, I'd like to get the council opinion on that. Opinion. That was what I was going to. Thank you, Attorney Angel. I look forward to reading that next month. Any other questions? Any other comments? Seeing none, that portion of the meeting is not closed. Old business. There is no old business. Madam Clerk, introduction of new business. Madam Clerk, introduction of new business. I know you're having a heated discussion back there, but we're going to get a follow up on that, so you can all provide a chance for the introduction to the business. Through the chair? Yes. I apologize. I'm sorry. That's all right. Are we into new business? We are. Okay. Um, just for the record, I also want to note that the uh, city's website with regard to the charter is correct. It is part of the code and the link to the code. If you look at the section on the planning commission, it does reflect the amendment. So I'm not sure what the speaker was looking at, but our site um, does contain the updated provision. Thank you, Madam Clerk. 1301. 1301. Um, proposed ordinance 4-1801, an amendment of Title 8.49 of the Code of the City of Cranston. In 2005, entitled Foreclosure Requirements for Owner Occupied Residential Properties, sponsored by Councilman Stikos to be referred to the Ordinance Committee for hearing on May 17th, proposed Ordinance 4 1802, an amendment of Title 8.44 of the Code of the City of Cranston in 2005, entitled Health and Safety, Smoking, Smoking Enforcement, and Amended Definition, sponsored by Councilman Hopkins, co sponsored by Councilman Stikos, referred to the Ordinance Committee for hearing on May 17, 2018. And we have <clears throat> a zone change application filed by BCPS Store Development LLC for 950 Phoenix Avenue. Um, this is not an ordinance form. This is to be referred for Ordinance Committee on May 17, 2018, to determine whether or not a substantial change has occurred as this was um, this was filed within that two-year period that was just discussed. 
We have a street name change petition for Marion Avenue filed by the uh, City Registrar Nicholas J. Lima to be referred for public works for 3 9 May 17th. And we have four poll locations from National Grid to be referred to the Public Works Committee for hearing on May 17th. They are Hope Road, Berlin Game Road, Lippitt Avenue intersection, Lippitt Avenue, Hope Road, and Berlin Game Road intersection, Lane Night Road, and Beachwood Drive, and Lane Night Road, and Hope Road. We have the following new claims to be referred to the Claims Committee for, <coughs> for hearing, and they have the following property damage claims. Gabriella, Desoglio from an incident, an alleged incident on January 12, 2018. Jennifer Kukudi from an alleged incident on January 12, 2018. Richie and Laurie Cerrone from an alleged incident on February 11, 2018. <coughs> Thomas Bianco from an alleged incident on February 17, 2018. Herbert George Isoma Jr. from an alleged incident on March 2, 2018. Thomas Mulcahy from an alleged incident <coughs> on March 6, 2018. Michael Davis from alleged incident on March 12, 2018. Eric McNamara from alleged incident on March 13, 2018. Kathleen Hart from alleged incident on March 14, 2018. Edwin Durante from alleged incident on March 15, 2018. <coughs> Judith McDuff from alleged incident on March 15, 2018. Dean Johnson from alleged incident on approximately April 2, 2018. Elizabeth Gibb from alleged incident on April 2nd, 2018. Aurora Bellucci from alleged incident on April 6, 2018. Linda Ardito from alleged incident on April 7, 2018. Momo Bellucci <coughs> from alleged incident on April 11, 2018. Bruce Stellieri from <coughs> alleged incident on April 12, 2018. Following personal injury claims from John Azari IV from March Jensen on July 21, 2017. Barbara Bedecker from March Jensen on November 27, 2018. Lisa Layden from March Jensen on March 2, 2017. Patricia Brewster from March Jensen on March 8, 2018. Personal injury and property damage claim of Oscar Pereira Esquina and Gennaro Pereira from March Jensen on March 3, 2018. And a miscellaneous <coughs> claim filed by Keith Reynolds from the March incident on July 19, 2015. That is all I have. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I have a motion to send all the business to the proper committees. So moved. Second. Under discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please take the roll. Councilman Lanny? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Stikos? Yes. Councilman Crawley? Yes. Councilman Kettle? Yes. Councilman Colford? Yes. Councilman Pavlaskis? Yes. Councilman Vice President Fabricio? Yes. Councilman Vice President Yes. The miscellaneous business on the clerk's desk. The city council's next monthly regular meeting will be held on Tuesday, May 29, 2018. There's no further personal privilege, uh, Mr. President. What, what is the point of personal privilege? The reason why I couldn't make the meeting. Oh, fine. I just want to address the public and explain to them while I was late this evening. Um, my 102 year old dad was just recently released from the hospital. Um, needs someone here. Can't be left alone. Uh, usually, council meetings start at seven. Uh, tonight was an exception, five, and I can't leave uh, him alone until my sister gets home from work at about six o'clock in the evening. So I had to wait until Linda uh, at home before I could leave him. So I just want to explain that to the audience. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming, Councilman Pedro. I hope you'll be with Family Matters. That being said, next Monday, City Council meeting Monday, Tuesday, May 29th. Like I think I said that already. I don't know if it is coming for the council to obtain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to second on discussion. Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.